Well, this is going to be take two. I uh, was recording some audio, realized I made a mistake on the video, so let's give this another go around. I always say I'm far from a professional YouTuber. What we're seeing here is a North Korean ballistic missile saturation strike in South Korea, Japan, and U.S. installations in the region. And it's really modeling the ballistic missile defense systems of Japan, South Korea, and the United States, and how well would they be able to intercept and stop um, the North Korean ballistic missile strikes. These particular ballistic missiles are all conventional warheads. Um, later, they are going to fire a very limited amount of nuclear warheads, but really they're trying to exhaust the Allies' uh, missile defense systems. So what you're seeing is you're seeing a lot uh, SM3s from the Arleigh Burks. You're seeing a lot of THADs. You know, there's a THAD battery in South Korea. I also put one in Japan. Um, there's Patriots. There's South Korean domestic uh, SAM sites. And there's Japanese. Uh, they have some destroyers as well. And there's a lot of radar installations, satellites, everything tracking and doing their best to intercept and they're actually doing a pretty good job of intercepting the majority of the ballistic missiles so far. So on the North Korean side you're seeing a lot of scuds, you're seeing some of the um, Musadons. So um, I'm going to take a quick pause. Alrighty, so sorry about that. Uh, should be paused. He shouldn't have had any weight, but um, my wife is making some Szechuan chicken, and you know, want to have a beer. So, I told you, I'm not a professional. I ain't got time to stop and redo stuff a million times. Um, funny thing on Twitter, I made a uh, tweet, and if you don't, if you haven't followed and you like my content, uh, jump on Twitter at Agnes Division. Uh, 2019 but I made a tweet and I said command modern operation is both brilliant and painful it was too funny or I'm sorry it's at mag division so at mag division um, Magnus division 2019 is Instagram um, but two of the command modern operations like developers liked it and one of them retweeted I thought that was too funny but honestly I love this program it um, and I have to give a shout out to as well my man, um, I'll probably butcher this. Nagina Takachi. Takachi. Nagina Takachi. Um, he's the one who helped uh, come up with this scenario and everything. Did a fantastic job. Guy's brilliant. He's done, um, he's modeled uh, the majority of the Chinese missile installations. Uh, can't thank him enough really helped me out on this content. So I'm kind of zipping things up here because there's just a ton of ballistic missiles and I'm not going to get play by play. Um, if anyone's interested in some type of tutorial with this stuff, I am more than up for it. The majority of my people aren't really, the watch this really aren't, you know, they're just kind of casual observers I've noticed. But if you'd like to see something like that, you know, leave me a comment, let me know. So I was kind of zipped this up because what I was really doing is trying to exhaust the majority of the North Korean conventional ballistic missiles and also their job is to, to exhaust the interceptors. So we're seeing the majority of the ballistic missiles have fired. There's still some. Seeing a lot of SM2s now being fired off. Uh, you can tell because they got their little radar signature on the nose cone. So here it is, a uh, Hassan. 14, uh, four missiles, 100 kiloton warheads, aimed at Tokyo. Two air burst, two ground surface burst. And so they've obviously launched a huge attack. Um, majority have been intercepted. They have caused damage to a lot of installations and locations. Um, most of those are going to be pretty easy to repair. You know, it's not going to take a lot of time. And obviously, uh, United States, South Korea, Japan both have strong capabilities to be striking back really hard. So in this kind of scenario, it's 
North Korea is like, let's escalate to de-escalate. We'll hit them with um, some lower yield, 100 kiloton warheads, and this is a, this is it. Unless you want to, you know, do you want to trade more cities to keep this going? So, again, it's coming in. You're going to see that there's a lot of assets tracking it. Problem is that these being ICBMs, uh, most of the ballistic missile defense systems here are not designed to intercept ICBMs. That is really, really good at intercepting the terminal phase of a intermediate range ballistic missile. Uh, Patriots um, are also capable. Um, the best thing we have right here in theater would be the SM3s. They have intercepted an ICBM-like missile once in testing. Um, in theory, I don't, you know, it's hard to say what their true capabilities are. The United States in particular seems to downplay capabilities, which is pretty smart. Um, I know a lot of when you read internet forums and other stuff really talked about how great the S300 and S400 was and how Patriot was a terrible defense system, missile defense system. Well, we're seeing that it's a very highly capable system, probably much more capable than what a lot of people thought, just as the Russians kind of overplay their systems. Not to say the Russian systems aren't highly capable too. S300, S400 are very capable systems, but there's certainly a little bit of overplaying here. So we are seeing um, several SM3 missiles being fired. Uh, you can't see it, but there's also ones coming in from the south coming down from the north, a uh, desperate attempt to intercept them. Uh, you know, we have several assets. This is one of the uh, uh, Japanese destroyers here tracking it. Unfortunately, they are unable to intercept. So they are, they have both batteries of missiles have missed. Uh, right now, there's some, you know, short range defense systems, but unfortunately, they are incapable, incapable of stopping that attack. Um, all four warheads did land and detonate um, relatively close to their targets. You can kind of see there on the left. Um, one landed on target. The other three landed relatively close to target. There's still a few conventional ballistic missiles being fired, but you know, like I said, relative damage. See here, a ton of missiles were fired off. Uh, 24 of the Scud Cs. Four of the Hassan 14s, 24 Musadans, 30 of 800 kilogram conventionals, 19 more, uh, no, 19 reentry vehicles, um, 18 of the 1,000 kilogram, uh, 72 of the Scud Bs. And so if you see there, 72 Scud Bs were fired, 33 reentry vehicles. That tells you how many were intercepted. You see the same thing across all their wounds. It looks like all, um, let's see here. So the United States, we fire, or the U.S. forces, allies, 87 of the Patriots, ton of them. I'm going to jump over here to the uh, nuclear war simulator. Let's give you an idea of what the casualties would be. I didn't model the conventional casualties, but this is to model what would be the casualties now that Tokyo's been hit with four 100 kilotons. So I did Two air bursts at 500 meters and two surface bursts. And apologies to my Japanese brethren out there. Um, unfortunately, you're the only country that's ever been hit, um, attacked with nuclear weapons. Didn't happen for my country. Of course, we are at war. I'm not going into that. Having said that, uh, even if it's just a simulator or whatever. Obviously, this is something that's very real to your country. It's happened. This would be 2.3 million casualties. 2.3 million casualties, and that'd be the initial. That's not going to model anything long-term. See uh, significant fallout dosage, uh, dosage, <laughs> dose, uh, fire damage, physical effects. Obviously, um, this would be hugely devastating. Tokyo is a very um, condensed city as far as it's got a lot of people living in a relatively small geographical area. Any type of nuclear strike would be absolutely devastating. Um Again, we have a ton of ballistic missile defense systems in theater. Even with that capability for um, 
overwhelming saturation strikes are quite high, quite effective. Um, again, if it stayed conventional, casualties would be relatively low. We would be able to recover from the base damage, but if there was an escalation there, we could see an extreme amount of casualties in a short amount of time. Um, stay tuned. We're going to do the same thing with China, and it's going to be even more particularly, you know, conventional-wise devastating. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. Also, um, let me know. Leave me a comment, anything you'd like to see. I look forward to hearing from you. Um, and some stuff on the horizon outside the cat videos and the, the cooking and the silly stuff. Um, looking for a conventional uh, invasion of Taiwan. That's going to be really involved. Probably be multiple part series because of it and because command monitor operations is not the quickest thing in the world. Um, and rightly so. But I've got to, you know, there's a lot going to go into that. So it's going to take some time to prep going to do a uh, Chinese uh, short and intermediate range ballistic missile strikes against U.S. and allied installations in the area. And uh, going to see, um, looking to do some stuff with Mountain Blade Banner Lord and looking to uh, go into a couple other um, war games I'm doing. I, I keep talking about it, but uh, Flashpoint Campaign Southern Storm is one. And then Literal Commander, the actual board game. I've been reading up on the rules, haven't really ran through one yet, but I did the unboxing video. I really look forward to that. Uh, tremendous system. I tell you, I, I can't recommend enough. Buy it. Get it. It's very approachable. Read through. I mean, everything is, it's simply complex. Put it like that. So, anyways, thank you, everybody. Have a great day.